So we're here in Autodesk Inventor, and uh, we're going to go ahead and start using the 2D drawing tools. Um, so when we start Autodesk Inventor in 2016, we're going to get this intro screen here. And the first thing that you need to understand about Autodesk Inventor is that we're essentially going to use, for, for our initial uh, drawings, we're going to use uh, um, one of the four types of files that are available in this drop-down menu. So a part, you can imagine a part as a uh, one physical object. So if you think of your phone, if you have a phone that you can take apart or take the battery out of, if you took the back off of that phone, the back would be a part file. Okay, so you want to think about it as one piece of a larger object. So for example, if you had like a modular table, the foot might be a part, right? Um, now let's think about that table, like say if I got a table at Ikea and it had like four feet, four legs, and a tabletop. Um, you can think of each one, each one of those legs, each one of those feet, and the tabletop all as parts. We then would assemble those parts into an assembly, which would be the actual final product of the completed table uh, in that case. And then we would take an assembly or a part and we would make a drawing out of it. That's like a... Um, that would be like a technical drawing that would show the, the whole part, the 3D model that we've made as, as a 2D drawing, like a traditional 2D drawing. And then presentations, those are ways that we can like explode an assembly that would be like an animation. Okay, so the two thing, the place that we're gonna start out is a part. There are a couple different ways to get a new part file. You can either do new button, you can click the I menu at the top and go to new, and then part. Um, Okay. Um, the way that we're going to do it for uh, when we work in here, we're just going to use this drop down where it goes drop down and then we're going to click on part. Either way, we get to this new part screen. Okay, so we're dealing with a, with a new part here. So let's take a look at what we have at the top. The, this uh, middle section, this uh, middle section right here is called the ribbon. And notice how I can switch between ribbons. So we have 3D model, sketch, inspect, tools, manage, View, Environments, BIM, Get Started in Autodesk 360. Okay, the first thing I'm going to show you on the ribbon is uh, actually in the Environments tab. Let's say, oops, sorry, it's in the View tab. So let's say that I sit down and I'm in a shared computer lab, and or for some reason I close a bunch of the stuff on the screen, and it looks different than I'm used to. Like, say, the, the uh, the explorer bar on the left here is gone or something like that. I can always go to the view tab to user interface and I can make sure that these things are all clicked. Notice that they're all checked right now. I can uncheck the browser and notice it dis disappears. Okay, I can recheck the browser and it comes right back. Okay, so if you change your interface to where you can't interact with it, you can always go back to the view tab, user interface, and then recheck these options. Okay, let's take a look at the 3D model tab and that's where we're gonna get started. So initially there's nothing on the screen. Everything in Inventor is based upon a sketch. So I make a two-dimensional sketch and then I add a 3D feature onto that two-dimensional sketch or 3D features onto the two-dimensional sketch. Usually it's one sketch per 3D feature. So let's go ahead and make our 2D sketch. We're gonna go ahead and click, notice that in Inventor, this menu item here, if I click the down button, I can click on start 3D sketch or start 2D sketch. If I've set start 2D sketch, I can just click the button. Okay, so I click start 2D sketch, and now I have to choose, remember this is a 3D environment. So the sketch is a two dimensional sketch. You can imagine it like in math class, it's on a plane. So I'm selecting a plane in 3D space, so the XZ plane, the XY plane, or the YZ plane, okay? Now, you wanna kinda of think about, later on you're gonna be able to choose you know, which one would be best for your particular thing you're working on. In our case, we're just gonna choose the XZ plane. So I'm gonna go ahead and I can click the XZ plane to just put the sketch right on there. I can also um, click and drag these yellow uh, um, circles on the edges of the plane and I can put the sketch somewhere above or below the plane. In our case we're just going to put it right on the plane. Uh, so notice because I dragged it up and down I have to click and click the green check. 
if I wouldn't have dragged up and down, I would have just clicked the plane. Okay, so notice that my screen just changed, and now I know that I'm in my sketch, and how I know that is twofold. One, I see the grid lines. Okay, so if I were to go over to the right here and I was to go to zoom, I was to click the down little uh, upside, the little triangle right there, click zoom. If I was to zoom out, oh, it doesn't look, whoops. <laughs> anyway, I know that I'm in a sketch because I can see these grid lines here. Whenever you see these grid lines, you're, you're pretty certain that you're inside a sketch. So right now, I'm inside sketch one. So notice I'm in part one on my browser bar over here on the left. I'm in part one, and in part one, I'm inside sketch one. I can also tell I'm inside sketch one because everything else is grayed out, and here's sketch one right here. Okay, um, go ahead and uh, pause the video, and you are going to go ahead and create, get up to this point, you know, open Inventor, create a new part file, and create sketch one. Okay, so we have our sketch ready to go here. Let's take a look at some of the 2D drawing tools. So we have line, circle, arc, rectangle, uh, fillet, text, point. We're going to skip project geometry for now. We have move, copy, rotate, trim, extend, split. Then we have our pattern options here. And we also have dimension. And then we have our constraints right here. Okay, so right now we're just going to concentrate on this section. And we're just going to use some of these tools uh, along with the trim tool to make a complex shape. Okay, so let's go ahead and start with the circle. When we're drawing the circle, the thing that we don't want to do, if you notice this little red or yellow dot in the middle of the screen, that's the origin. Okay, if I were to start my circle on the origin, it would stick to the origin. It would be constrained to the origin. I wouldn't be able to move it later on. Okay, so I'm going to purposefully not put it on that yellow dot. I'm going to move it somewhere else. Okay, now how I how I um, draw a circle in Inventor is I click, I move the mouse, click again. Okay, so it's not a drag. It's a click, move the mouse, click, not click, drag, click, or click, drag, release. Okay, so I went ahead and made my circle. Now you don't ever um, you don't ever just make a shape in Inventor. You always dimension that shape. Always, always, always. So because of the fact that in Inventor, notice how there's no units on our uh, grid here. This circle could be as big as a building. It could be as small as a, uh, uh, it could be a nano circle. It could be as big as the earth. Okay, we don't know because there's no dimensions on it yet. So let's go ahead. So dimension it, we actually go into the dimensioning tool. We click on the dimensioning tool. We click the outside of the circle, so it's a click to highlight the circle, a move to move the dimension out, and a click again to place the dimension. Then we edit the dimension. So we don't worry about the size of the circle initially. We then set the size, and we tell the circle, hey, circle, you are one inch. And then we click the green check. Okay, notice that, it, um, notice that the circle expands outside of where I can see it on Inventor. So how I fix that is I go over here, and I'm going to click on this little uh, magnifying glass. I click the down button, and I click zoom all. And what zoom all does is it resets my view to have all my shapes inside the view. Okay, so that is the circle. Let's say that I want to, now, um, a very common mistake is notice that the dimension tool is still on. I actually have to click that dimension button again to, to get out of the dimension tool. So notice that now that I'm, oops, sorry, I have to right click in the area and click OK. And notice that that dimension tool is now unhighlighted. So once again, if I want to dimension something, let's try it again on a rectangle. So now I'm going to draw a rectangle. I'm going to click on rectangle. I click, move the mouse. I click again. Okay. Notice those icons that come up when I draw a rectangle. We're going to ignore those for now. Okay. Now I go ahead, I'm going to dimension my rectangle. So I click, I click on the dimensioning tool. I click one of the sides. We're going to go ahead and make this uh, rectangle one inch on one side. So I click the green check. I'm going to make it two inches on the other side. So it's uh, I'm in the dimension tool. I click, move the mouse, click, change it to two. Click the green check. I'm going to go ahead and click zoom all again. Notice I already 
change the tool to be zoom all so I can just click the magnifying glass. Okay, so now I'm still in Dimensioning Tools, so if I want to exit Dimensioning Tool, I actually right-click in any blank space on the page, right-click and click OK, and that exits me from the Dimensioning Tool. All right, so I have this kind of um, uh, I have this kind of complicated shape going. The next thing I'm going to do is go ahead and make a line. So I'm going to click on Line, and notice that if I want the line to intersect the rectangle. If you notice the little green dot underneath my cursor, once I hit the line, that cursor turns green. So notice that that dot is green when it's intersecting the line. So I want this line to intersect the rectangle. So I'm going to make that dot turn green. I'm going to click, move the mouse, and then I'm going to click again once the line is green, or once the dot is green. If you can't see the, the dot, it should kind of snap to the line. You'll see the line jiggle a little bit. I'm going to go ahead and try to make it 45 degrees. If I don't, that's OK. I'm just going to click. And that makes my line. Now I'm going to go into the dimensioning tool. Okay, now I can dimension the angle between the lines. So if I click the line and I click the line adjacent to it, notice how the next to my mouse or next to my cursor we see that little angle. So notice that now I can actually change that angle, right? So we're going to say 135. Okay, so it's 180 minus 45, basically. And you'll see why I don't use this other line. So I'm not using the line above because I'm going to trim out that corner. So I don't want to dimension against the line that I'm going to trim later on. So I click green check. OK. So I have my, um, my dimension there that is an angle between two lines. That's the dimension I'm using. Okay, so now we'll go. Now let's go ahead and make an arc. So let's take the arc. Arc is kind of similar. I'm gonna. It's a. It's a three clicks. So I'm gonna click at the first endpoint, which is on my line. I'm gonna click at my second endpoint, which is on my line, and then I'm gonna pull the arc out. Notice if I keep pulling, that the arc just gets bigger. Okay, I'm gonna go ahead and pull it out to be, just kind of. Where I'm just going to eyeball this for now. So I'm going to go ahead and click. And then I'm going to go up and add a dimension. And the dimension is actually, when you dimension an arc, the dimension is actually the radius of the circle that the arc is part of. So in this case, I'm just going to leave it as 4. Let's, let's make it a round number. So let's make it 40.4 point, point, let's say 0.5 inches. Okay. All right, so I've done my line. I've done my arc. I've done my rectangle. And I have done my circle. Okay. The last thing that I'm going to do here is I'm going to put a fillet on. Okay, so fillet is how is and notice these nice help menus in uh, in Inventor. If I just pause my mouse over a tool, it'll give me a big help thing about the tool. So I'm going to click on fillet, and I'm actually going to go ahead and notice this is the radius of the fillet. So I'm going to go ahead and choose a, a circle, and notice how I get the or choose a corner on the rectangle. Notice how I get that nice preview right there. So I'm going to go ahead and click. And that puts on my fillet. Okay, and then I can close to get out of the tool. All right, finally, the last thing that we're going to do uh, for, for this portion is that we're going to go ahead and click trim. And we're just going to go ahead and trim off some of the lines. So notice that trim, when I highlight a line, it'll highlight the line segment. So when you notice that I, I made this, uh, this line that kind of um, closed off part of my rectangle. So if I highlight, I click the Trim tool, so I'm inside the Trim tool, I highlight that line segment and click, it will remove that line segment. So let's go ahead and remove some lines in our drawing. So I'm just going to remove the corners of my rectangle. Oop. Control Z to undo. Um, notice that it's going to, um, uh, we're going to go back to Trim, let's see if it's going to work for us. Okay, so. This is kind of what happens in Inventor. It becomes kind of uh, experimental on some, some aspects. So um, we're just going to go ahead and leave that line in for now. We're going to go ahead and trim, trim off part of the circle. So we have kind of one contiguous area, contiguous area here. Um, notice that this dimension becomes a little funny also. So the dimension that was on the line now goes to the nearest point. So this will happen if you're creating a complex shape in Inventor. Okay, so to try it on your own, go ahead and uh, use all four of those tools, so the line, circle, arc, rectangle, 
and fillet, as well as the trim tool to create a complex shape. Complex two-dimensional shape and inventor. Uh, good luck.